Buried in your dissatisfaction, you often get advice to turn back to Allah. Pray to Him, they say. Talk to Him. He will make a way out for you, they say, but you just have to ask more. But then when you earnestly sit and pour your heart out, why does it feel sometimes like Allah isn't even listening to you? Why isn't your dua getting answered? Are you even worthy of being heard? Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates something beautiful. He says, إِذَا كَانَ الرَّجْرُ دَعَاءً فِي السَّرَّاءِ ثُمَّ نَزَلَتْ بِهِ دَرَّاءً فَدَعَاءً That if you have a person who's accustomed to making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good times, and then he goes through a hardship and makes a dua, as his voice travels through the heavens, قالت الملائكة صوت معروف فاشفعوا له The angels say amongst themselves, that's a familiar voice. Let's go intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his behalf. But on the other hand, if a person is not accustomed to making dua in good times, فَنَزَلَتْ بِهِ And then a hardship visited upon him, and he called out to Allah, قالت الملائكة صوت ليس بمعروف ولا يشفعون له The angels say to themselves, that's not a voice that we usually hear. And so they don't bother to intercede on his behalf. I want you to ask yourself, how often does your voice travel through the heavens? Is it only when your world starts falling apart? Maybe the best thing you can get out of dua and hardship is a relationship with Allah that isn't dependent upon hardship in the first place. When Ibrahim السلام, had his hardest moment, he spoke of his Lord as an intimate friend that he already knew and with such confidence he said, Inna Rabbi lasami'u dua Without a doubt, my Lord always hears my du'as. And when Zakaria calls out to his Lord, he says, وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَ You've never disappointed me before with my du'a, O my Lord. And you would think hearing that, that Zakaria was a rich man with lots of palaces and children. But he was a carpenter in his 90s, living a very simple life, while he and his wife never were able to have children. And with that, he says, you've never let me down, O Allah. But how can that apply to you? You've taken your steps towards Allah. You've made dua with sincere hopes that it's going to be answered. And then you even make changes in your life. You strive harder, but temptation still comes your way. Your old sins seem to keep resurfacing like test after test. Didn't Allah say that one step towards him will cause him to come to you with speed? Why does it feel like the temptations are coming at you just as fast? And when you continue to try to not be deflated and make reaching out to him a part of your regular routine, sometimes your hardships seem to be endless. How is it that some people can still be so optimistic in the face of continuous hardship? Why don't I have that relationship with Allah? The Prophet وسلم, said, a dua huwa al ibadah. Dua is worship. And you can't only worship Allah when times are tough. And one of the things that was so beautiful about him وسلم, was that if you saw him in sujood for a long time, crying and making dua, you wouldn't know if something really bad just happened to him or something really good just happened to him. Because both hardship and ease drove the Prophet ﷺ to the same position of prostration and prayer. But for the rest of us, sometimes Allah prescribes the bitter medicine of hardship so that perhaps we can wake up and perceive the very purpose of our existence. And just like sin can be a catalyst to come back to Allah, Hardship can be a catalyst to fall in love with Him. 
And that relationship with him is the greatest risk you can get when calling upon him. Because before the removal of the hardship itself, we can feel this expansion in our chest as faith is renewed and settled within. But I turned to Allah and made dua to him. Shouldn't all of my problems actually go away? The Prophet ﷺ said, Call upon Allah while you are certain in the answer. And when my servant asks about me, I am close. I respond to the call of the caller when he calls upon me. And that's why Umar said, I don't even worry about the response to my du'as. I just worry about the ability to make du'a because I know that Allah will do his part. So the greatest outcome has already happened, which is a long overdue conversation between you and Allah. But did you know that the greatest reward is actually then waiting patiently for the response? The Prophet said, He said, ask Allah for his bounties as Allah loves to be asked. And amongst the best acts of worship, is to patiently wait an expectation of relief. This as opposed to the person who the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will answer until they say, دَعُوتُ فَدَعُوتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي I prayed and I prayed and he didn't answer me. Don't kill your dua by losing hope because that dua from your human heart can literally change the world. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَا يَرُدُّ الْقَضَاءَ إِلَّا الدُّعَاءَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ فِي الْعُمْرِ إِلَّا الْبِرِّ he said, nothing repels the divine decree but supplication. And nothing increases a person's lifespan except for good deeds. And there's a subtle wisdom in the scheme. Our most sincere du'as are usually when we're desperately trying to repel something. So nothing is going to remove an evil from you like a desperate du'a. On the other hand, what usually holds us back from spending our time and money in doing good is that we think we're missing out on something that's better in life but nothing actually increases our time and sustenance like those good deeds themselves. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying that dua repels bad decree and good deeds increase good decree. But what's bad and good anyway? One of the beautiful things about dua is that it's not limited to your request that comes from your limited perceptions of your own life and what you think is best for you. So Allah doesn't answer you in the way that you want, but He always answers you in the way that you need. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah can answer in one of three ways. He can answer your dua by quickly fulfilling your supplication, or He can store it for you in the hereafter, or He can remove an equivalent evil to it. So He can respond to your dua about passing an exam by averting a calamity that could have claimed one of your loved ones. He can respond to your dua for a job interview by giving you an even better job. He can respond to your dua for cure with unimaginable rewards in the next life that would make you wish that he never answered a dua for you in this dunya. But you can't sincerely call upon Allah to change an outcome unless you're willing to give up your own false sense of control. Or even worse, the sins that are blocking your duas. Ibrahim ibn Adham rahimahullah was once asked, what is wrong with us that we make dua and we receive no answer? And Ibrahim responded, he says, it is because you know Allah and you do not obey Him. You know the Messenger and you do not follow Him. You know the Qur'an and you do not act according to it. You eat from the blessings of Allah and you do not thank Him for it. You know paradise and you do not seek it. You know hellfire and you do not flee from it. You know the shaitan and you do not fight him, instead you follow him. You know death and you do not prepare for it. You bury the dead and you do not learn from it. You ignore your faults and you busy yourself with the faults of others. Do not press claims against your Lord because your request has been delayed. Instead, press claims against yourself for lacking in your behavior. If we can lift the barriers to Allah's mercy, then we can open ourselves up to the possibilities of our dua. Dua is the strongest means that delivers on your deepest needs, your highest ambitions, and your wildest dreams. Every dua is either taking you somewhere or taking you away from something. So when you see the people whose struggles seem tougher than yours, 
and wonder about how they still double down in sincerity. Try to emulate that connection and remember that you are calling upon a Lord even more merciful to you than your parents, who knows even better than you what is best for you. Perhaps what you needed to learn this whole time was patience from the one who was patient with your absent voice. It may be that Allah accepted your prayer even though it came after years of ignoring Him. So accept His decree with you even if it doesn't make sense for years to come. Because if Allah has not heard you call out to Him for so long, how can you be so hasty in demanding His response right now? But just know that he gave you a chance to make dua because he wants to decree in your favor. Any time he allows your tongue to move in prayer, know that it's because he wants to give you something in response. But dua has many phases and many steps along the way. The first step is you just learning to talk to Allah. But now you need to learn to trust him because on the way to the answer of your dua, you're going to stumble a few times, all for your own good.